Uh, my first impression of of Belgium was, you know, you get off the train in Antwerp Central, and Antwerp Central, like the the big train station in Antwerp, is enormous. Like it's huge. It's the biggest train station I've ever been to, besides maybe Rotterdam Central. But it's uh it's really really big, and it's like old too it looks like a when you like step outside of it it's got like really interesting old like classical architecture and you step out and everything is like cobblestone like they're the streets are are like paved and i think that's more of a that the streets are definitely paved but like everything else is just cobblestone and it's super interesting walking on it because you know you never know when that cobblestone was placed or how old it could be and so there are areas that i went to in belgium where you know, it felt like it was just a really, really old neighborhood that um, that had lots of history to it. So that's the that was my first impression. It was just so historical and so well kept up. The thing I miss most about Belgium is, I'd say, the people first and the food, because um, every person I've talked to who we've come back uh, come back from the Netherlands and Belgium, we always talk about how the food is better there. There's like it's just better quality. They grow it there themselves. There's not as much you know preservatives or stuff put in there. But I mean, things like um, Belgian frites or fries there are incredible. And there's there's some places around here, especially um, you know in in Provo where I live, which is uh, where they have uh, Belgian frites, and you know more places are starting to do them uh, where they you know double fry them, I guess. And they it's it's a good uh, substitute, I guess. But nothing's going to compare to the to a, to like a frite vendor where you get them in that little cone and you can put your samurai sauce on it. It's, oh my gosh, it's so good. I miss the food. But again, the people, I, I loved uh, Belgium. It's interesting because you go, most people start off in the Netherlands and learning like Netherlands Dutch. And when you go to Belgium after having lived in the Netherlands for a while, it's kind of like your first day there is like your first day all over again because you have to learn, like adjust to the to the new culture, to the new language and the accent. I remember really clearly I got picked up from the train station and we were going back to my new apartment and uh, my companion was driving and he got a phone call. He goes, oh, hey, answer this. This is one of our friends that we're talking to. And I answered the phone and I just remember for like a solid two minutes, he was just talking and I was like, what is he saying? Like, I could pick out like little words and stuff like that, but I was just like trying so hard to understand this new accent and I was like, think he says that he's sick and that he can't meet with us today and then uh and so i just like said it back to him to like uh to whatever and he's like oh yeah yeah, that's right and i was like okay well have a good day feel better i hung up and i was just like oh my gosh this is like the first day all over again it's just kind of funny in that sense but yeah i i really do miss uh the people the people are incredible and i love them to death in belgium they have this thing called stoflace and it is it's like this roasted meat that you put in like gravy and stuff you think of like canadians where they have like gravy on fries and stuff like that well like belgians put this like gravy meat next to their fries and onto their fries it's incredible it's so so good uh one of them like made it for us homemade and i was just blown away it was amazing it's so good i wouldn't say there's a ton of crazy foods in belgium what i thought was really interesting is they have bread vending machines there which i thought was really fun um there was one night where we were just kind of like had you know we were looking around for people to talk to and just figured like oh let's go get some bread so we went to the vending machine and got that other really cool stuff in belgium they have they're like known for their oysters at least for where i was from or their mussels and so again some people uh were really nice and and made us mussels and it was the best mussels i've ever had so i it was i've had a really good experience in belgium with food because it was it was just a uh, homemade and, and amazing food i loved it Something I love about Belgians is how um, they're so kind to you. Like when we would try and talk to people, you know, they they try and be really respectful of each other. They have that whole idea of respect really good because they're, you know, even if they're not super interested in, you know, talking to missionaries about what they're there for, they're they're still willing to kind of talk to you and get to know you and just be be nice about it. They're they were uh, kind of an interesting contrast between Dutch people who were very like. Um, very direct and very um, stern, but at the same time, there it was. It was cool. I really like Belgians for that because I still talk to a lot of my uh, my friends from Belgium, and you know they, you know we have good conversations and everything, and, and I love them. Belgian people are amazing because Belgium is a multilingual, uh, a multilingual country like French and uh, Dutch as well as some Italian. 
they uh, they kind of inter interuse and interchange some phrases. So like um, in the Netherlands, you say alstublieft to say please, but in Belgium you can say alstublieft or s'il vous plaît, like in uh, in French. They also say allez a lot. Like allez is like just kind of like oh come on, but then they use it. They kind of like extend that word to kind of do anything like well like if it kind of also means um it's like oh well no i don't know like it's it's like super interesting to hear them then speak as a linguist as someone who like studies linguistics that's something really interesting to think about the whole kingdom of the netherlands used to include the flanders region of belgium and so that's why they speak the same language still um the netherlands has kind of become more and more like modern they actually sent out like a full like books saying hey this is how we're going to do grammar they literally like people compare dutch and german a lot and um, they are pretty similar in reality but um dutch has purposefully dropped all of the case all the cases and stuff like that so in german you have like d der des when using the word the like using articles but in the netherlands they're like yeah we don't really want to do that anymore so they literally just said we're not going to do this anymore <laughs> Uh, so the Netherlands, you know, they, their language has kind of drifted from, uh, I guess, what you would call like Old Dutch, but you, I mean, as well as Flemish. Flemish is the language that they speak in, uh, in Belgium. And it's, in reality, they're pretty much the same language, but they have different, think of it as like American English as compared to uh, British English, where, you know, you can definitely understand each other. It just takes a little bit to get used to the accent and maybe some of the vocabulary words. Um, People have described Belgian Dutch or Flemish as like a Scottish person speaking Dutch because it just has a little bit of a different sound to it. Um, in the Netherlands, one of the key like markers of the language is like a guttural G, so the H. But in Belgium, they tend to use a more like aspirated G, so like a H. So it's it's like super interesting to to look at the differences between those two. Um, Belgians don't tend to use the informal U, so there's a formal and an informal U in, uh, in Dutch, and Belgians tend to use the formal U for everyone, and in the Netherlands you can kind of use them for uh, differently or interchangeably, so you know, it's not like a don't to say the informal in Belgium, but usually they just kind of say U to, like the, the formal to everybody. So in, in the Netherlands you, you'll, you'd say something like, uh, Goede dag meneer. Uh, ik ben Ruben, ik ben hier om uh, met u te praten, and it's very, uh, in, in that sense, but then in, in, in Belgian you'd say like, um, Goeiendag, ik ben hier om uh, met u te praten, en dat uh, wat wij een goede taak mogen hebben, en uh, ja, allee, ik wil uh, met u praten. It's, a, it's like a very uh, softer, not as like harsh language, I guess, if you're comparing the two. Uh, but it's, it's, to me as a linguist, it's super interesting to, to hear the differences between the two of them because they are so similar and they're written exactly the same, just with different, uh, with different accents and stuff like that. The majority of people who speak Flemish live in Flanders, which is like the northern region of, of Belgium. And then at about like Brussels, that like line of Brussels, everything below that is like French. And there's like, you hardly hear any Dutch. But in Flanders, lots of people still learn French because French is like the, the legal language there, so all the documents and everything like that are in French. But, uh, you know, they have, they have translations and stuff like that. But the, the higher register, like I guess the, the more used register overall in Belgium is French. So lots of people in Flanders, in the northern part of Belgium, uh, learn French at least a little bit to be able to understand, you know, street signs or, or documents and that kind of stuff. Whereas people in the South, to my understanding, don't really learn Flemish all that much. One of the big things, not just in Belgium, but in the Netherlands, is you can go to different towns and pick out different accents. So in Belgium, you have Bruges or Brugge, and their accent is like super different from someone from Antwerp or Iserf or from Ghent, like or Henk, which is on the other side of the country, or even uh, Brussels. So it's super interesting to hear the differences between them. And I got to serve in Antwerp, and I learned... A, a good amount of like their dialectical, they call it Antwerps. And there's a phrase that I, I think is really funny. I've actually looked it up since coming home just to try and figure out what it actually means. But it, it's like, Nies Vanze, or Vanzani. And I asked a lot of people about it and they're like, yeah, I don't even know how you would spell that. We just only say, it's not really written, but it really means like, oh, come on, you're pulling my leg. You'd, so you'd say like, oh man, like, look, there's, there's a, there's a parade going outside. And they're like, ah, oh, Vanzani, like, stop pulling my leg. Like, what are you doing? 
or uh, it's kind of like it's just kind of like a what are you doing kind of thing or what's going on. It's it's like super interesting, and I thought it was funny, and I'm I'm probably butchering it just because <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't uh, heard it as often. So for those watching, I apologize if I messed up Zvonzani, but it's. Uh, it's i think it's super interesting just the different uh the dialectical differences even just in the same country when you, with the overarching uh, language of flemish or flams there are a couple holidays that are kind of uh specifically in belgium so you got uh one that's called saint martin it's like a catholic holiday i don't know if much many people actually celebrate it there i wasn't there then but it's kind of like belgium's like halloween type thing world war one uh began really in belgium and there's a place that's called Iper, and Iper is like where one of the biggest like battles of uh, of World War One happened. And so they have a big monument there. They still have a bunch of the trenches there as like not commemorative, I guess is the wrong word, but just kind of like as a uh, kind of as a tribute to the people who fought there. Um, there are these really interesting things in Antwerp, at least I don't know if they're anywhere else, but they're called Star Forts, and they're like. You know, before even you know World War One and all that kind of stuff, there are these forts that they had built um, around this city to try and you know you know house a bunch of people, have uh, have a big building there, which are really cool to look at. The most beautiful place in uh, in Belgium, at the very least, in my opinion, is Brugge, like Bruges. Bruges is like a very very old city, and it just has a lot of classical Belgian uh, architecture. The the centrum there, like the city center there, is really cool. There's lots of stuff to do there. It's it's a great place to go visit. Brugge and Ghent are like incredible places, and they're just beautiful because they like there's like castles and stuff in there, and that and you know as someone from the U.S. you don't really see you you never see castles or you never see any of those kinds of things. So being able to go to a place with lots of rich history and like rich um, you know I guess you'd call them tourist sites, it's like it's really really fun to go there and be able to. Uh, to go to those places. So Antwerp is part of, uh, of Flanders, and so I, I served and I lived there for about five months, but I got to go to places like Bruges, to Brugge, to uh, Ghent, to Henk, which is all the way like on the east side of Belgium, to other places like Turnout, to um, Hale, which is just a little village around there. Got to go to Brussels quite a bit just because of um, of a bunch of legal stuff when you go to Belgium you go to Brussels a couple times to make sure that you're good to live there and so I got to I actually got around a lot in in Belgium in terms of going to different places and I thought it was for my first impression of it being a pretty historical place it kind of it kept that uh, reputation in my mind places like Brussels are it's a huge city with tons and tons of history and it's super cool to to go there, especially, like I said, from an American standpoint where everything in the U.S. is only, you know, two to three hundred years old, whereas there things can be, you know, five to eight hundred or even a thousand years old that are still standing, and it's super cool. Ik wil heel een heel grote bedank zeggen aan de mensen van België. Ik hou erg van jullie en ik ben blij dat ik straks terug mag komen en ik hoop dat ik straks terug mag komen. Ik, ik dank jullie voor alles wat u voor mij persoonlijk gedaan, hebt, uh, gedaan hebben en dat ik, uh, en dat ik zo uh, goede uh, dingen mag uh, herinneren van, van jullie. Ik, jullie hebben echt een hele grote indruk op mij gehad en, en ik hou van jullie.